everybody, my name is Eli. My name is Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we're only running with three-fifths of our spokes right now, and we know that your time is very special. And I, actually, we're only running with two-fifths of our spokes because it's only Eli and I, because we decided we need to make sure we get this done at least before noon every single day, because that's kind of what we told Yah we would do. And so it's been a hectic week, and our cows keep running away, and the big boys are out doing fencing and doing a whole bunch of other stuff that we're trying to protect our cows and keep them from running away. And so you only get Eli and I, and maybe Nicole from across the room, but probably not. So, Eli, how you doing today? I'm doing good. What's, uh, what's your last 24 hours been like? Um, fencing... Uh, help with dealing with the cows. Come closer to the mic, son, so everyone can see you. I see you, and I hear you. Uh, fencing, dealing with the cows, um, that's pretty much what we've been doing. It gets kind of stressful, doesn't it? Yeah, keep yeah. running away. Okay, so we are here because we absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, love what? Yahoo. And? Yeshua. And? Um, His laws, statutes, and uh, commands is what I was going for there, Eli. And I could tell you that without a shadow of a doubt that our lives are not the same as they were prior to when we start keeping the laws of Yah. And it is a honor. It is a privilege. It is a uh, just a wondrous thing that we are actually able to talk about a set of instructions that our creator deemed so important that he came down and wrote on a sapphire stone that he is able to tell us the do's and don'ts of life. Imagine a world where we didn't know we shouldn't eat the blood. We, sh we didn't know that we shouldn't marry our sister. We, it's okay to look at our mothers without clothes on. We shouldn't do any of that, right, Shug? No. Why not? Uh, because it's against the Torah. Right, and we wouldn't know that. So what? give me, right out of the gate, Eli, give me two or three blessings that you have received in your life because you keep the Torah. Right on the spot. Um, well, we got out of Babylon because we followed Yahuwah. Yes, we got out of Babylon. We call North America Babylon. Um, or if nothing else, Mystery Babylon from Jeremiah 50 and 51. What else? Uh, we have we have this land probably blessing yeah, from Yahuwah. Absolutely, yes. Without a shadow of a doubt, our Creator has been able to sanctify us, has set us apart, and has put us in basically out in the middle of seclusion, far away from the rest of the world. Um... I believe for a time such as this, and so here we are. Anything, anything else you got? Our dogs for protection. Our dogs for protection. That being said, sometimes our dogs aren't the best protection. Sometimes they're the attackers. Sometimes they bite us, but they don't mean to bite us. They mean to bite each other. And I don't know is, you know, I honestly do not know that we would be able to keep ten pit bulls without the power, without the strength, and without the the messengers of Yah. Because most people don't keep one or two pit bulls, and if they do, they keep them on chains, they keep them far away from each other. We live and literally probably die with our pit bulls. They, they, how many pits do you have in your room? Uh, I, get, I have two. You have two. So he has two pit bulls. The other boys have three, and they have three each, and then we have two that patrol the land that don't have anybody. And um, yeah, so the boys are probably the most protected people in South America. Uh, we only worry about the people jumping over the fence. We're scared that they might get hurt badly. And so there's really no fears for us. And so, yes, I do think that Yah has us uh, in his hands. And so we are very much blessed. And I believe that everybody out there would be blessed if you keep the laws, statutes, and commands. Yesterday, we went over some stuff. What are the, what are the stuff that we went over, Eli? Um, it would be laws of right rule. It was laws of right ruling, like if your ox attacks someone things to that degree like with your cows things so uh, are they way. commandments for us today it's if we are in the land of Israel. okay and what happens if we have an ox that does gore somebody that we didn't that uh you know would we follow these laws probably yeah you think so maybe i think so we'd try to right if our ox gored somebody we'd try to make it right i don't know how you'd make it right with a life and some of the commands we don't quite understand. Some of this stuff, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to us because we're not in that culture. We're not back in that time. But every law and every command that we are going over is very important, regardless of if it's just a judgment or a statute or something of the sort. So today we're dealing with more statutes. And again, these are things that, you know, if you were in the land of Yisrael at a time such as this and you guys were keeping the law, statutes and commands, this would be part of that culture. All right. So let us begin. Exodus 22, 1. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, 
he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Now, Eli, would this man do this by himself? Probably not. He'd pr so what happens if this guy doesn't have four or five oxen? He's stealing an ox because he's hungry. Um, so a, a little bit later in this chapter, it actually tells you what happens. Okay. He has to sell himself. Oh, sell himself. So he becomes a slave. Yep. Uh, that's how we figured that happened. All right, two. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. All right, what does that mean, if a thief be found so breaking? So basically if someone's breaking into your place and you and you kill them, uh, you don't get like, you get punished for it. So, there, yeah, so there's no punishment. So you can kill a man that is breaking in your house. And I would say that it should be somebody dangerous, you know, if you have like a like a little girl or something jumps over your fence, you know, obviously she's she's there. That's no, no threat, no danger to you. So a lot of this stuff, we want to make sure that, you know, it, we have understanding of this. If the sun be risen up on him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. Okay, so what does that mean? We have two different kinds of judgments here. One is in darkness. And one is in light. Right, so if the light is there um, and there shall be blood, he would make full restitution. Um, if he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. Just basically what you said. So yeah. there is a difference between nighttime crime and daytime crime. At least for the thief. If the theft be certainly found, if the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or donkey or sheep, he shall restore it double. Okay? If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten, and shall put in his beast, and shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution. Okay, so what is that saying right there? So basically, if your animal, you let them into, if you like, if your animal goes in someone else's field and eats all their crops, you have to give them your crops, your finest crops. So we have had that happen to us, and we've also done that to others, unfortunately. Yep. Um, we, our big old milk cow, Ruth, you know, I'll never forget the time that she escaped, and she, she was the escapee of the cows before she died. She would take off, and all the other cows would follow her. Well, one time we found her over in our neighbor's cornfield and we're like walking up on her and she looks back with this huge corn stalk in her mouth and just sitting there chewing it up and the owner of the field's looking at us and we're like oh no so what did we do for that uh we gave him some money we got and we got him some corn seeds yeah we got we gave him corn seeds and we gave him some money and we told him we were very very sorry and still that is hard to deal with uh as a farmer when your crops are gone because another person's cows had jumped over there okay so that same thing happened to us that same farmer who we repaid just recently, his car, cows came over and tap danced all over our cows. What did he do for us? Uh, he helped us plant a bunch of uh, corn. Yeah, he helped us plant a bunch of corn. And he didn't actually do anything. He's, he's just like, how much did he wipe out? But uh, this old timer is really super cool, and we love him. We think he's uh, some sort of angel, some kind of guardian that has been out to show us the, the ropes of the jungle. All right. If fire break out... And catch in thorns, so that the stacks of grain, or the standing grain, or the field be consumed therewith, be he that kindled the fire shall be surely make restitution. Okay, simple enough. Yep. So burn someone's stuff down, you have to like uh, like repay them. Yeah, you got to be super careful. You can't just uh, you know what do they say, play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. If you're sitting there playing with fire, and you burn your entire neighbor's stuff down. Then you you need to fix this, right? That's the way of the just. Seven, if a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to guard, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have, he have put his hand unto his neighbor's goods. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory, right, Eli? Yep. So, so if someone like gives you something to like hold on to while they're away, and it like disappears when it's in their house. You have, if you find the thief, then the thief has to like repay it back. But if the thief's not found, then you have, then you have to like go to the judge and see if his neighbor who was guarding it actually took it. Yeah, and these are really really good things because if you didn't have these kind of judgments, this stuff has probably happened. I'm sure somebody loaned somebody something and it didn't show back up. Then you got to figure out what to do. But we have the answer to that. All right, um, nine, right? Yep. For all manner of transgression, whether it be for ox, for donkey, for sheep, for raiment, for, for any manner of lost thing, which another challenges to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. 
So they even have things um, uh, of that. If like two be playing the same exact thing. Yep, and so that that can very much happen, which is why probably branding started. I would imagine. I don't know if you brand sheep or not, but uh, probably not. It might be a tiny brand or something. Now they're full. They're wool grow over the top of it. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Maybe their ears. Nicole says maybe their ears. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, ear tags. But then they take the tags out, and that's, yeah, that's replace, my sheep. Replace them with their tags. Mm -hmm. Okay, ten. If a man deliver unto his neighbor a donkey or an ox or a sheep or any beast to guard, and it die or be hurt or driven away, no man seen it, then shall an oath of Yahuwah be between them both that he has not put his hand into his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. Okay, so that's 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 crazy stuff. That happens all the time in the world, right? You mm -hmm. you uh, put something somewhere and somebody steals it, or they say they stole it, or something. So this is interesting because they want you to, to do an oath between them, you know, Yahuwah, mm -hmm. oath of Yahuwah. That's heavy duty, right there, Shug. Yep, you have you have to like stay to the oath. Yeah, you you, you would. That's the last person in the world you'd ever want to make an oath and and mess it up, right? Because Yah is the one thing about Yah is what. Um, he, he is merciful, but he is also very angry at those who break his commandments. Yeah, and he's also very, when he says he does, he does, and his ways don't change, and neither should ours, right? We shouldn't be wishy-washy uh, when it comes to that. All right, verse 12. Um, did I do that one? Uh, and if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution to the owner thereof. Okay, so that's interesting. I don't think we talked about that. Um, if it's stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. Um... Who makes the restitution? I don't know. It doesn't say in mine either. If a man deliver unto... Okay. Um, then shall an oath of Yahuwah be between... He that put his hand unto his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall make... Okay. So the owner's got to deal with it. If you make an oath with Yahuwah, and if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner. So if it's stolen in your house... And if he pro isn't found, you probably have to pay for it. Yeah. You got, you got to make good of it, which is probably the right thing to do... If you're actually watching somebody else's stuff. So again, these are righteous judgments. You know, I, a lot of them don't make sense, but we're not there in these lands. All right. And if it be stolen from him, we got that one 13. If it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness. And he shall not make, and he shall not make good that which was torn. What does that mean, Eli? So, so if it's like torn in pieces. Mine, here, so something rips it to shreds, mm -hmm. right? Mine says, if it be torn in pieces by some wild beast or by accident. Let him bring the mangled carcass for witness. He shall not make good what was torn. What if all the good beef is ripped off and all that's left is a skin? Where'd Glove? the rest of it go? Gloves, anyone? Well, gloves, yeah. But, I mean, I'm, t I'm talking about like, yeah. what if somebody, like, actually, you know, you bring mm -hmm. a carcass, the meat's gone. Okay, where'd the meat go, friend? Mm -hmm. And it's not torn. You can definitely tell somebody has been Cat. animal, animal torn and mm -hmm. human torn. All right. And if a man borrow aught of his neighbor and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. Okay, so you and I, I borrow a cow from you. Um, and if it gets hurt while you're watching it or it dies. So I'm using my cow to plow the field somehow and yeah. the thing falls over and dies. What do I do? You have to pay me back for the cow. Right. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be a hired thing, it came for his hire. What does that mean? Eli? Okay, it's it's a little bit different in mine. It's more explanatory in mine. Okay, read but it. But if the owner is with it when the damage is done, the borrower shall not make it good. If it is a hired thing, the damage is included in its hire. Okay, so basically, when it's like hurt, if the owner is with it, he doesn't have to it doesn't have like any problem. I don't think. Yeah, so it's the responsibility is kind of on the owner. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his woman. Okay, wow, what a world that would be, right? Yeah. So instead of uh, all these babies out of wedlock, if we were actually in covenant, you would, if you want to play the game, then you would become a husband, which is what you should be doing if you're out playing the game, right? And so very, very good statutes, very good commands, right? And um, you never know what kind of uh, son-in-law or daughter-in-law you'd end up with like that, right? Um, you would never know. The parents wouldn't have much of a, a chance, uh, choice. 17, it says... Okay, if her fa father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. So then you have a defiled daughter that whoever goes into her again is an adulterer. Ah, oh, man, lots, lots of stuff to, to understand here. All right, 18. You shall not suffer a witch to live. All right, Eli, is there any, uh, there's a lot of witches these days. Yeah. There's a lot of warlocks. I would say half of the U.S. government is warlocks and witches, I'd have to say. I mean, I don't believe they're humans at this point. 
I mean, I don't, I don't know if you've seen the carcass that they call a, a president or not, but he's barely alive. And if you look at pictures of that dude, he's not the same dude from before. You know, I don't know what games are playing, right? It's uh, uh, in a real world, we would not allow the politicians that have sold us out to humanity to live. And I know that is a hard thing to say, but in a holy, righteous world, we wouldn't have people lying to us and deceiving us and literally trying to kill us. I mean, for those with eyes to see and ears to hear, you guys know what I'm saying. Verse 19, whoever lies with the beast shall surely be put to death. What? Yeah. Who would think about that? What kind of psychopath is out there? Lies with the beast. That is insane. Well, we now know we need to kill the witches and warlocks and the beast. But it doesn't say warlock up here. Would, would a, what is a, I guess a male witch would be what they call a, a warlock. So, yeah. Okay, so anybody that is lying with a beast in, or any witches and warlocks, it's time to get rid of them. Okay. He that sacrifices unto Elohim, save unto Yahuwah only, he shall be utterly destroyed. It says, any Elohim. What does that mean, Eli? Uh, like a mighty one. So if you sacrifice to Baal... You'll be utterly destroyed. Yeah, kill him. Kill him all, right? So this is, the, this is the way it should be. You know, you go out back of your house and you have, uh, you know, Mr. Smith next door and he has a fire to Baal and he has his daughter or something passing her through the fire... We should probably kill him. We should probably get rid of him. him before he passes into the We fire. should do that. Absolutely. Yes. You shall neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Mitzrayim. What does your say about vexing? Wrong. You shall what? You shall not wrong a stranger. Okay. So a vex, would I would think, is like some sort of witch's curse. But yeah, obviously, if you're going to kill a witch, you shouldn't be sitting there vexing people. Yep. Okay. So you should not wrong a stranger nor impress him, for you were strangers in the land of Mitzrayim. Eli, that goes against everything in Judaism. Because there's things called goyim, and the goyim are are strangers, they're neighbors, but but the Jews hate them. Yep. So basically, if you are in the religion of Judaism, you do not keep the Torah. The Torah is what? Uh, like, Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Right? Out, anything outside of the five of that is not the Torah. Right? You can have the oral Torah, but that is a lowercase t, and that is doctrines of men, and it is evil. Right? All right. Twenty-two. You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Why not? Uh, it says the next one. Okay. Thanks, Eli. <laughs> if you afflict them in any wise and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. Does Yahuwah hear our cries? Yeah. How do you know? It, he has said that he will hear their cries. Talking cry. to the mic, son. He has said that he will hear their cries, so obviously he hears cries. Did he hear our cries the other day when our cows were gone? I believe so. What do you mean you believe so? Uh, they came back. Dude, we had zero leads. We had zero hits on our cows. We didn't know where they were. You guys walked for hours on end, and no cows were ever found. Nothing was ever happening. We started crying to Yah, and we're like, Yah, you know, we, we realize this is a very small thing for you, but to us humans, this is everything. Our cows are gone. We love our cows. They're not. I, I don't know if we'll ever eat a cow. That's a th crazy thing. The Boss Clan, we've had 20-some cows, and we've never once eaten one of our own cows. We love our cows, we grow up with our cows, the cows grow up with us, and we've never had the heart to blow one away and eat it. Um, however, that being said, we had one that has fallen ill and we had to kill it, which is a horrible thing, and we made it into dog food, which to this day, the dogs are eating. So praise Yah for all of his awesomeness and everything. So Eli, back to this. Did Yahoo hear our cry? Yeah. Why? Because the cows came back to us. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eli. All right. So, and so if we have pressed the widow and the fatherless child, um, and they, <laughs> they cry to Yah about you, and my wrath shall wax hot. Oh, that, that's, that's great, having the, 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 the wrath of Yah wax hot against us. That, that's not a good thing. And I will kill you with the sword, and your women shall be widows and your children fatherless. Wow. Okay, don't mess with the widows, don't mess with the orphans, don't mess with those who are broken. Right. I mean, these are people that the fatherless, uh, you know, they have no they have obviously no father. They, you know, the, the widows have no no husband. And it's, it's sad. It's, it's so, yeah, don't don't mess with the people that are already sad. Twenty five. If you lend to any of my people that is poor by you and you shall be to him as an usur, neither shall you lay upon him usury. What does your say? Uh, if you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you shall not be to him as a creditor. Neither shall you require interest from him. Okay, so somebody comes to you and you they ask you for a loan, Eli. Okay, here how about this? How about I come to you right now? I need I need a hundred dollars. Okay. Okay, will you give me a hundred dollars? I loan you a hundred dollars. Okay, you loan me a hundred dollars and I I'm, don't charge, I'm long gone. I don't charge any interest on you. Yeah, well I never give you the money back. How do you deal with that? 
question. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Okay, right. Some of these things we don't, I mean, they become a thief at a certain point, but I mean, this is the thing is we are not supposed, what happens though if you see me and I'm really poor and you need your $100 back and I don't have this, what are you going to do? Um, probably help you out somehow. Well, what if I give you my raiment, my clothes? Um, well... What does the Torah say about that? Uh, well, I would have to return it to you. Because yeah. Because that would be your only clothes. Yeah, and that's what the Torah... That is... In the next couple was, verses. Is that in the next verses? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, I didn't even... I haven't really read this. Eli, Eli read this before Back me. to the next verse. Oh, well, there you go. Um, if you at all take your neighbor's raiment to pledge, you shall deliver it unto him by the sun goes down. By that, the sun goes down. Okay. So if I, if I give you my clothes, if I give you all my clothes, okay, man, I can't pay you this hundred bucks. Here's, uh... Here's my here's my pants and my shirt. You're, what what are you gonna say? Uh, just keep it, man. Keep it, bro. Don't don't give me your pants, man. Okay. I'm, I'm good. I'm for good. For twenty seven. For that, okay. Uh, pledge. Part twenty six. Twenty six. If you at all take your neighbor's raiment to pledge, you shall deliver it unto him by that the sun goes down. For that is his only covering. That is his covering only. It is his raiment for his skin. Where. In shall he sleep, and it shall come to pass when he cries unto me for that I will hear. For I am gracious. So, guys, this is one of the things about the Torah, and this is the thing about Yah's will, and that Yah's caring for you, right? Listen, listen. He says right here, he cares even about the clothes you have. If you don't have clothes and you cry out to Yah in the middle, that distresses Yah, right? That is why there's judgment such as this, that Yah will come and clothe you. He will feed you when you're, when you're broken, but we are not to oppress people like this. Very, it's, it's very important. All right, 28. You shall not revile the Elohim nor curse the ruler of your people. Okay, what does that mean, Eli? Um, so Elohim, that's lowercase Elohim, so that means a mighty one. You shall not revile the Elohim nor curse the ruler of your people. Who's the ruler of your people? Um, well, the ruler of our people. It wouldn't be Bo Jiden, right? No. Uh, well, if we're talking about Yisrael, then our ruler would be Yahuwah. Right. So what about, it says, you shall not revile the Elohim nor curse the ruler of your people. What happens if it's just a vicious, evil ruler? I mean... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things we do not know. Um, hopefully we're not in exile. And um, the, the, the bottom line is we there's one Elohim most high. We need to give all praise to him, all glory to him, all sacrifices to him, all righteousness to him, everything to him, right? That doesn't say we don't love Yahushua and give him all glory and all love because of what he did for us. All right, 29. You shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe fruits and of your liquors. The firstborn of your sons shall you give unto me. Are we are we pouring out booze or something? What are we doing here? What is the seniors? Um, you shall not delay to bring me from the fullness of your harvested grain and the outflow of your grape juice and olive oil. Give me the firstborn of your sons or redeem them. Okay, so we're back to the, I believe it's what Levitical stuff is, which we will find out later about the, the firstborn and um, having that. But w when you have the first of the land, you know, when you first take your crops up, the very why, why is it important we give the first fruits to Yah? Um, because it's like a command. Not only is it a command, but when you have a field that it's gets... It's kind of like you're thanking Yahuwah for what he has given you. Like you're giving him the first of your stuff. Yeah, and the first thing that you would want to do, like people would want to do in general, is take the first of the best of the stuff and they would give it to themselves. And that's not what Yah says. He says, give it to me, for I am I am the one. Okay. Um, 30. Likewise shall you do with your oxen and with your sheep. Seven days it shall be with your dam. On the eighth day you shall give it to me. What does that mean? What did you say on yours? Likewise shall you do with your oxen and your sheep. Seven days the firstborn beast shall be with its mother. On the eighth day you shall give it to me. Okay, there you go. That's for the first born. And ye shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. All right. Our, our dogs just get 40, 40 paws up. Yay. Okay, what does that mean, Eli? We, so, you shall okay. be holy men unto me. What does that mean to be a holy man? Um, well, following his commands would be considered holy. But, like, so right here when it says about, like, any flesh, like, roadkill, and pick up roadkill and eat it, that's one of the things. Why not? Uh, because he says not to. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the things if we have a cow that dies and it just barely died, we don't, there's no way to eat that, right? We cannot, we, you'd have to put it into the cow's life for it to be acceptable as food unto us. And so, why wouldn't we eat roadkill? 
Um, because it's disgusting, probably. Besides that, I mean, it, it, people eat roadkill all the time. Like, people from Arkansas, Alabama, like, they literally go alongside the road and they pick it up. Um, I remember on Duck Dynasty, they, um, it was uh, Jace and Sal, and they were going around picking up, like, dead, some sort of pelts on the side of the road. They were dead, and it starts smelling so bad inside of it. Now, why wouldn't you want to eat that? Unclean. It, well, besides it's unclean. Okay, so it's it's unclean, right. But why would you not want to kill roadkill? What happens to, to roadkill? What happens when something dies? Um, it starts, like, getting disgusting. It disgusting, rotting out. There's bugs that eat it. Like, here, this is the process of cows, right? The cows will die, and if you don't gut them, they blow up into a huge thing, at which point they pop. <laughs> and it's really gross. But during that process, the bugs will come to it, and they will start eating it, and they eat it from the inside. So Yah has a way that is right because he wants to keep us safe. Right, Eli? Right. So he doesn't want us to eat some unclean food. Even if you just cook this up, there's, there's, you know, Leviticus 11 tells us what's clean and what's not clean, and this is definitely not clean. And so these are, these are really good things that, you know, some of these don't apply to us, but the things that would apply to us is, is something like this. And I would, I would probably say this might actually be a command. Um, because this is something that would apply to us, but it's also something that we would learn from Leviticus 11. So I'm actually going to take this back to the quorum, all of our quorum, and we're going to talk about this because even though these are judgments, um, there are commands. I mean, and in fact, this whole thing, the more I think about this right now, Eli, um, it's pretty much all we should keep. Yeah. It's stuff we should keep. I mean, we should, uh, like, I don't know about suffering a witch to live. We would be in jail for murder. Probably shouldn't do that these days. Um, it, you should probably kill the people that lie with the beast. That was probably a good idea. Um, but like where it says you should not vex a stranger nor oppress him. So, I mean, I think right there is a command. I think we have a whole bunch of commands here, guys. Um, we're going to go back through this, and we'll probably end up back on this chapter again with the rest of our tribe uh, as soon as we get caught up with what we're doing. So, we're going to end this one today, and... Um, but I'm not sure that we are actually done with Exodus 22. So we're going to go through this as a family. Everybody's going to read it real slowly. Um, like this, where it says, you shall not suffer a witch to live. I mean, that, I know that's, I know that's for a different time, but it is a commandment. I mean, we should not, all that kind of stuff is evil. All right. So everybody, I thank you guys very much for tuning in. And I'm um, sorry, we're only two, two of the five wheels, spokes on this wheel and Hopefully we will get everybody here soon enough and we can go over this stuff. But until next time, I hope you guys are doing a preparation day. Today is a day before Shabbat and tomorrow will be hopefully a wonderful day of rest. Eli, do you have anything else? Uh, read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. All right. Keep the Torah. Yep. Keep the Torah. That's the, that's the, that's the difference between life and death, right? Uh, salvation begins at the stake or at the cross with Messiah Yahushua, but then we don't have to keep putting him up on that stake to continue living in life. Much love. Sure.